So if I talk from here, it will pick me, yes. just like this. I don't need to do this.
A very, very good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the NSSF Financial Literacy Program. This is when we convene for our next two hours of school. We've been through school, we've been through university, we've been through kindergarten, we've been through primary. Everything we've been taught, history, chemistry, mathematics, no one ever teaches us about money. So this afternoon, for these next two hours, I'll be the headmaster, I'll be your professor, I'll be your everything, the principal. I just have a few metrons lying around uh, somewhere in this school. But for the next two hours, we're going to be talking about money. My name is Apollo Mboa, and I am the headmaster of this school this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome back. It's a new financial year. We took off a break for one, one whole month to prepare for the next six months, and that is what planning does. As, the, as we are planning for you as NSSF, we ask you a question. Uh, did you plan for yourself? Because as institutions, we have, we, have the, uh, we have a mechanism where we sit down and plan. We take off a month and plan and do things for our, uh, to, to just make sure that we can deliver to everyone. But while we are doing that, are you also planning for yourself? We need to ask that. I, I usually ask the matrons of this school, are you also planning for yourself as we are planning for uh, the, the, the membership out, out there? We are paid to plan for you, but are you planning for yourself? Thank you so much for joining us. Again, today we are talking about multiple sources of income. We are joined by a panel of good experts. My job is a simple one, just to introduce them, uh, a little bit of them, uh, not all of them. But before I do that, I always want to take you through the perspective. Why do we do this? Why are we always, as NSSF, you have been asking for your 20% and maybe we are not doing webinars about it. But when it comes to your money, the one that is in your pocket, we are coming and saying, can we talk about it? And that is what we are doing. We are coming to you and talking about the money in your pockets. So why do we do that? Why, why is it that uh, as NSSF we are stretching beyond, our, beyond your 5% that you give to us and coming to you for your 95%? Today I want to just share two numbers out of the several numbers I usually uh, share. That last number there, only 5% of the people who have worked end up financially independent. What that means that if you are able to order something from Jaffa's, if you are able to drive to workers' house, if you are able to buy data or stream this live like what you're doing right now while you're in employment, you're also able to do the same when you go into retirement. Most of us, when you go into retirement, 95% when they go into retirement, they need to drop in level. What that means is your children are encouraging you to go back and they are saying, Daddy, you go to the village. Continue the village has fresh air. They are convincing you in all sorts of things. There is no jam. But those children are not going to the village. Why? Because they know there is nothing that good in the village. And besides, all the villages have become cities. So the price of sugar in Kampala is actually the price of sugar in the village. So while you are thinking of retiring and going to the village, because your, your incomes are going to be lower, you think your expenses are going to be lower, don't lie yourself. Your expenses are going to stay the same or even go ahead, go above what, uh, what they have been. So what are you doing while you're in employment to prepare for that time? 56% of us, again this number, 56% of us, Shadrach, before you go to the next slide, 56% of us get financial advice from a family member or a relative. Now, you get your good sum of money and you're engaging the house girl, you're engaging your brother, you're engaging everyone in the clan and asking them, what can I do with my money? You are the first person to get that amount of money in your house, in your whole clan, and you are asking everyone else who has never gotten that kind of money. And these people will give you advice, not because they wish you to fail, but because the, the advice they will give you is exactly what they know. They will not tell you, they will not say, go into treasury bills when they have never done treasury bills. And whichever advice they are giving you, is it the best advice for you? Make use of a professional advisor. At NSSF, we provide those services. I won't say at free of charge. I will say you have already paid for that cost. So whether you use the service or not, you are paying for it. Multiple sources of income. Allow me to go to the point today. 
every year new businesses are rege being registered. The graph you're seeing there is the new businesses that are being registered every year. Just last year alone, you, you got about 18,000 businesses, 18,000 new businesses being registered. What that shows is there's a lot of entrepreneurship happening. People are waking up and they're involving themselves in multiple sources of income. Where can I get, where can I do it? Side hustle, side hustle here, side hustle here. But today I want to speak about that side hustle. Is it working? Do you need to have the side hustle? Yes, we are entrepreneur, but how many of us are successful? We want to have that conversation. Allow me as I finish to just share with you these numbers. If Shadrach is a, a good person, uh, Shadrach is our live streaming person from Xtreme, live Xtreme. He's a Mugole, so you will allow him to, to do some of these things. But he does a good work for us, and it's one of his side, multiple sources of income. So please, when you have something to do, reach out to Live Extreme. Uh, Shadrach uh, uh, Brokerage is one of my side businesses. So when they come to you, please send the brokerage fee. 29% of the organization of organizations, 29% uh, establ establishments closed during the COVID period. Of the establishments that have been there employing people, 29% closed. 50.1% reduced their payroll. So meaning, whatever they were paying you and you were complaining that you are paying me so little, you are so giving me so little money, how can I work for this money? They now reduced it and you are still working there. 2.1 introduced new products. That also shows there was an opportunity. 80% of, of, of people in the working class are involved in an extra project on top of their work. But very few of these are very successful. Again, I just show these numbers just to put perspective in this. The majority engage in projects where they are putting their individual effort. So you are a lawyer, but then you start a border border business. And when you retire, you want to write border border. So it requires your individual effort. That's the majority. You are a banker, and in the evening you go for Uber. Uh, you are, whatever you are doing, in the evening you are running to see your mobile money shop. If, it, if you are not there, if they don't see you, they will not give you anything. There are also formal markets. There is a huge igno ignorance, uh, and I'm not saying ignorance in not lack of knowledge, but people are ignoring the formal markets. Everyone is going into a business. Everyone is going into uh, a consultant. Everyone is going into a side hustle. And they are injecting their sums of money. But very few people are looking at uh, formal, uh, formal markets as a, a form of, of, of multiple source of income. Unit trusts, if you put their money, they will give you money. Treasury bills, if you put their money, they will give you money. Savings accounts. Real estate will give you money if you put their money. Equities, circles, investment clubs. People are ignoring those and they are opting for individual effort. So today, we are asking, do we need to engage in multiple sources of income? Do we need to engage to have multiple incomes? Yes or no, we will probably get to find out. We have a, a, a distinguished panel of, um, I don't want to call them experts, but of experienced person. If we get there, why are we engaging in multiple sources of income? Why? We need to ask ourselves why. Am I doing it because it is the norm? Side hustle this, side hustle that? How do we get engaged? Do I need to run away from, like I am employed with NSSF and you, in the evening I I'm running to, 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 to do an MC, something, uh, MC job somewhere, or can I do it on Zoom? How do I do it? What is the optimal? How many multiple sources of income should I have? 20, 30, 1, 0? When do I do it? Do I start at professor's age? Do I start at Christos? Do I start at Fiona's or do I start at my baby age like mine? When do I do this? And we are going to have some of these answers. In the conversations, we are going to try to answer this. Is it a forever project that forever I will be always pursuing multiple sources of income? That when I am now 80, 
I still need to have multiple sources. Oh, at a certain point, I need to consolidate. When I'm a judge, do I need to have multiple sources of income? When I'm 18, do I need to have multiple sources? Is it a forever project? ETC, ETC, ETC. So, we are going to hear personal, 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 <coughs> personal conversations from the, pa from, from the, uh, they are personal conversations from a, a distinguished panel. But before we do that, I would need to know who we are, who we have right here. If you are, uh, Fiona, please help me launch that poll. We need to know who is with us today. Thank you so much. We have 430 people uh, with us right now on Zoom. Much more on uh, social media, the other social media channels. I cannot see them right now. So, would want to know, are you female or male? What is your age? Are you below 20, 20 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50 or above? Why we need to know this is that panel needs to address themselves to you. They need to be relevant to you. Kindly take off five minutes, five minutes to, no, sorry, five seconds to pick, and then I can introduce to you. I'm, I'm actually excited. I'm, I'm, I can't hold myself. I'm excited to introduce some of these people. I told you one of my things here is I am arriving, because when you keep talking, I mean, hmm, me, I'm also there. Uh, in five, four, three, two, one, uh, please take down the poll and let us see the results. Take down the poll and let us see the results. What do the results say? 57%, this is now, I don't know, we, 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 need, we, need, we, we did something right. 57, thank you, Christos, thank you, Fiona. 57% are male. The very first time we are having something. Uh, <laughs> a male majority for, <laughs> for this. The next, uh, on, in terms of who is attending, we have 33% between 20 to 30, 42% between 31 to 40, and 17%, 41 to 50. The rest are above, only 9% is above 50. Thank you so much. Kindly launch that second poll and then I can introduce this panel. Launch the second poll. We just need to understand what you are doing. Launch that second poll and then we I can hand over to this panel. Uh, yes, how many streams of income do you have? Do you have zero? Do you have one? Two, three, or more than four. You who is attending, just give it so that we understand who we are speaking to. If you are speaking to people of more than four, we may need to instead do the listening and instead of uh, uh, preaching to you about multiple sources of income. So in five, four, three, two, one, kindly take down the poll and then we see how many people we have. The majority of the participants have one income stream. That is 38% of, of, of the people right here have one income stream. 5% have no income stream at all. 35% have two income streams. 17% have three income streams. And only 5% have more than four income streams. So, panelists, that is the audience you'll be talking to. They are NSSF members. They are, some are not NSSF members. They are the nation. As NSSF, we are going uh, with this to everyone. So, the participants, today we have a distinguished panel. Fiona Wall. Nabasa. Yes. One of the things they were asking me that you have only brought Bazungu. So Fiona Wall is a Ugandan lawyer, a public relations officer, at, uh, who served as a public relations officer. She's the president of Uganda Law Society. Fiona Wall served as also a lecturer at one point. She was a DJ at another point. Yes, Fiona Wall was a DJ. That's still also, uh, I'm trying to get wrap my head around it. 
and currently she works with the National Water and Sewage Corporation. Fiona, welcome. Crystal Newman, another Muzungu name. Crystal Newman is a celebrity, a TV personality, radio personality, TV host, MC, digital influencer, and she's been doing this for over 20 years. Crystal, thank you for joining us. Augustine Nwagaba, a graduate of London School of Economics, Masters of Science, MBA, and PhD. He's an international consultant in the African region. He's a member of the African Panel of Experts Development. You will allow me to go through this, but don't feel bad eh, if you you will allow me to go through this. He's a consultant with the UN. He's a UN consultant on analysis of COVID uh, to the manufacturing se sector. Actually, that report I read uh, was, was produced under that. He's an international consultant on analysis of Ugandans in diaspora. I'm going to skip some of these. He's chairman. He's a, he's a member of the World Bank Consultative Group. I'm just skipping. I'm now reading in fours. fours uh, I skip four and go to the next one. He's an international consultant in the in for the Economic Management Project of Sub-Saharan Africa. He's a national consultant for spend across ministries, departments, and agencies. At NSSF, we don't spend that much. Yeah, we don't spend that much. Agencies and an audit committee member of Ministry of Finance, Planning, and Economic Development. He's a national consult consultant for post-legislative scrutiny under Parliament of Uganda, focusing on public finance management. He is a Rotarian and a major donor. He is the chair of the eminent persons of UNFO and team leader mapping versus uh, map map diaspora investment. He's also the team leader for developing national re uh, research agenda. He's the chairman of the RAVE group of companies, but today he's going to be talking personal finance. Professor Nwagawa, thank you for joining us. Crystal, please take it on. Thank you, Headmaster. <laughs> it's nice to take over. <laughs> Um, uh, nice to see you as well, and thank you to everyone who's joining us for this discussion on multiple sources of income. Um, I like that the word side hustle were used. I say that this whole concept is about hustling in general, and it's an honorable thing, because if you're hustling, then you're improving yourself and you're working towards something. So uh, I'm happy to be here to share my experience. Um, as I might have mentioned earlier on, I did not know that I was a hustler <laughs> until <laughs> it was defined to me. Um, from the time I was 15 years old, I was working. I actually thank my father now. At the time, I thought he was very, very mean because he used to pay for school and your basics and why did you need money? I mean, if you asked for money, what do you need the money for? Mm. So from a young age, I knew if I needed some money to spend for myself, I had to work for it. So every holiday, we would work small jobs. I worked in my sister's nursery school. I worked teaching little children how to swim, even though they would scream in my ear. But it would be so nice to see after a year, they're comfortable in the water, little basically frogs jumping around. In my S4 vacation I worked, in my S6 vacation I went to the UK and I worked in a McDonald's the entire time I was there. People get comfortable. I could have gotten to a point where I was on radio, I was making some money, decent money for my age, and I didn't have to do so many other things. But I jumped into other things. One of the first things I did was television, hosting as well. And emceeing. Now, people would look at me like, but why do you take it so seriously? Because when I would emcee an event, I would meet the client once, twice. I'd go to the venue. When I'd get to the venue, I'd meet every single person there. Who's the hostess in charge? Who's in charge of sound? Who's running the presentations? Go through the program with everyone. And people are like, okay, you're taking this a little too seriously. Isn't this a side gig for you? Mm -hmm. But I'm like, no, I'm taking it seriously. It's giving me money. 
And over time in communication and media, I've continued to apply myself in different ways to keep earning and not just from radio, not just from TV, not just from emceeing, but now also online, a lot of my work is digital now. So I would say I've been doing my thing <laughs> since about 15. But for a lot of the people who are joining us now, we are still trying to define what multiple sources of income is. So I'd like to first start with you, Professor, and ask, in your opinion, what do we mean by multiple sources of income? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Christo, and, and uh, Fiona, and our, our viewers and listeners. I hope you have a lot of listeners. Now, multiple sources of income is a natural law. It's a natural law. And I will just use one quick example. My home is in Kabale. You also know Kabale very well. And we have Lake Winyonyi. When I migrated here to Kampara, I also saw Lake Victoria. Easy to learn about it in geography. But since the creation of the earth, Lake, Lake Winyonyi is created through tectonic movements, tectonism. While uh, uh, here Lake uh, Victoria is through warping, it's down warping, the other one is tectonism, because the lake is on top of a hill. Here it is just in the valley, it's a basin, basin lake. But the, the, the explanation for both lakes, and I've, I've been observing them very, very seriously, is that I've never seen either Lake Winyonyi for the last 50 or so years having water that is dwindling, that that water is going down. Never. And I've been wondering, then I came to Kampara here. The first time I came to Kampara was, of course, to come with the university. You come with, you don't even have shoes. I have never seen Lake Victoria only one time when we had trouble with it because of this Chira Dam. But otherwise, Lake Victoria, if you can calculate the amount of water that gets out of Lake Victoria to the Mediterranean Sea, you cannot believe it if we calculate the volume of the water. Then I sat down and said, what is this? I started thinking, and this is the question I want to put to you, even those who are listening. Have they, have they ever seen these two lakes drying? And the answer is no. The, and the reason is simple. The reason is metaphysical. This is God's power. You see? And why? Because I don't want to put you to, to, to class as a professor, but the reason is really very simple. That If I put to you the question, will you answer it? Why is it that these lakes have never, the water has never gone down? Not even by an inch. And the answer is simple. The rivers, the rivers which go into these lakes are much more than the ones which, which take out of the water. Mm -hmm. And for you now as a human being, why do you want to, 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 to claim that you are more clever than God? <laughs> if you wanted to claim that you are more you are clever than God, okay, you go. You, you, you go, we shall see. But uh, multiple source of income is very, very simply defined. And it is that it is not possible that you can take out money in your pocket that is more than the money that is coming in your pocket. It is absolutely not possible. If you are that kind of a person that is in the habit of getting money out of your pocket, then the money which is coming into your pocket, we are going to find you in, in, just in, 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 in Makshini Bay enjoying the sunshine. I'm telling you, and we shall come for you. I will bring you tea and, and food. But most of us, most of us, and I mean, I'm speaking, just as a natural person, not as an economist, not as a financial person, not as a professor, not as a person who has seen a little bit of blackboards. I've seen a little bit of them in quite a number of countries, but nobody has ever t t taught me that. Mm -hmm. This I was taught by my mother. My mother never gone to school. Is from those who understand Uganda is from Rubabo, at these homes of Professor Kagonyaraz as well. And my mother, I'm sure we should, we should also have been a professor. Because mm -hmm. all of you in the areas that this professor Kagonyarazi has mm -hmm. produced professor Nwagab, even our sister was a professor, my auntie who is there last born. So my mother told me that you must have what you call inzibizi. Inzibizi means you must have some income in your pocket which, which must make you make sure with it that if you come rain a day or shine a day, you have some money in your pocket. It's called mm -hmm. in Civis in mm -hmm. And I didn't find this at the London School of Economics. Nobody taught me this, including Green, who formed the World Bank. But for me, my mother had told me, please make sure that when you are spending, 
Can you imagine? Can you imagine? The, the, the poor woman never went to school. Please make sure you have what you call NZBZ. Mm. NZBZ in the Chikarinyankore. Direct English translation means, please, make sure that in your wallet, they, and they, I, that, that's why I like ladies. These men I don't like very much. <laughs> because it's very hard to find a lady in her bag, not having some money. These men will just move and they don't have any money in the, in the pocket. <laughs> But it, a lady will move like my mother, they will never, she was in the church. If the moment they come, there is, she has the, the small book where she writes money every month and she takes her money there. And she doesn't have a lot of sources of income. To cut the story short, therefore, uh, Crystal, multiple sources of income is a very simple thing to understand, I think, from my exposition. Please. Make sure that the, 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 your expenditure is less than your income. Mm -hmm. If your expenditure, let me now come to, 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 to global economics. Let me talk as a professor now. If your expenditure is more than your income, you are going to run what you call a deficit. You are going to run what you call a deficit budget. And Uganda runs a deficit budget. It is very, very unfortunate. <laughs> runs a deficit budget. The money the country earns is less than the money the country spends. That's why this country is never balancing its budget. So it is always in problems. When the, the, the Minister of Finance goes to Parliament every day, is asking for supplementary budget or for loans. Mm -hmm. The reason why you go for loans is because you are spending money than you get from Uganda Revenue Authority, which is very bad. Countries like Botswana, and let me pick Botswana, I like Botswana with the Ketumiri Masiri, the great democracy in Africa, whom we celebrate, is the only country that has surplus in New York. And you cannot joke with the, with the people in Botswana. Mm -hmm. They are the people in Africa who do not have any single debt. You must celebrate them. Why? Because in Uchikaru Nyankore, they cut their clothes according to, they cut, they, they, they cut their, they, they according to the dress, according to the, the size of the cloth. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the chicken, have you ever seen how chicken eats? How, how does chicken move and find food, it bites something, it can swallow. It can swallow. So that's what, that's what it is, uh, Crystal. It is a very simple thing. If you are a man and you are a, you, the, the, the woman, you are in your home and you want to, to, to spend more than you, 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 you earn, you want to ask your husband more, more than he can accept, it, that's called nagging and your home is going to break up. <laughs> your home is going to break up completely. And I'm and, and also a, a, a professional counselor, professional counselor, not the one picked on the road. I have a certificate, professional counseling. These are most of the cases we get. Women who are nagging their husbands that they are spend, I mean, there is no money, because the husbands spend more than what they earn. And this is absolutely not good for yourself, not good for your family, not good for the countries you can see, not good for the global economy, including America. Mm -hmm. America spends... America earns 200 billion. That is balance of trade with China. But China sells their goods worth 200 billion in America. America sells China goods worth 60 billion. There is a trade deficit between America and China of 140 billion. Do you see how Trump was going to fight with, 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 with the Jinping? Mm -hmm. This is the trade war between China and the US. And it's not good there for at individual, at family, at community, at national, at international level. That's what I wanted to, 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 to say. Thank you so much for that. Mm. I like that you talked about your foundation. Mm. You talked about the natural order mm. of things, even when we look at nature. Mm. And then you talked about the individual level, then the household level, mm. then you keep scaling up community, national. And at the, at the end of the day, it's all about money management. I'd like to go over to you, Fiona. Thank you so much for defining the multiple sources of income. In your experience, when was your first understanding of seeing someone uh, you know, having different sources of income and your first understanding of what this concept was? Because I know you talked about your mother mm. and how at some point your mother even had five businesses. Mm. Could you tell us more about that? So my first experience, my parents were civil servants. And uh, when I was eight, I think because now we were three kids, and I think my mother did maybe think she was progressing at her workplace. Uh, she quit work to be with us at home. That's what she said. 
but we had what we call boys quarters or a guest uh, place that has various rooms mm. and she started five cottage businesses uh, she had a bakery she had a weaving loom uh, that that weaves bikoi uh, she had a small grocery uh, where you get groceries you know all sorts of things um, and she also had a salon a beauty salon mm. Uh, mm. she she also was supplying food. Uh, she, she was working with some people to supply food. Uh, I think she started with schools, the army, things like that. So she just had a share there. She wasn't an expert in that area, so I think she had shares there. Now, I was exposed to her multiple sources of income because my mom had a very serious, uh, uh, similar to Professor, a very serious um, habit that she has up to this day. Mm -hmm. She had a little path a little black path and every day should collect whatever she has earned it would be about 4 p.m mm. and should put it in that path and should give it to me i was in ginger and i'd get on a bicycle and it would ride me up to ucb and in ucb there was a friend i was eight remember so at eight friend. years old, you're banking your mom's money I, and i didn't know it, it was only recently that i was talking to i think a friend of mine, and we're talking about our mother's habits, and mm -hmm. I remember that. There was a, she had a friend at the bank, and unfortunately she passed away. And this friend would give me, I would just take this bag to the friend, the friend I think would bank it for her and give me a slip, and I'd put it back in the little purse, and I'd take it back home. That happened all my life up to, up to when I was, even now, if I, if I went to see mom, and I, She'll say, how are you? How are the kids? It's not, it's not a surprise for her to just say, um, I saved some money. Can I contribute to the fees this mm. time? Or can I do this? Because she always has something kept away. Mm -hmm. So whatever she got from those small businesses, she put, she put, she saved one. The second thing my mom did that was quite, in, in the 80s, it wasn't normal for people to save. I think we were coming out of the war and Ugandans, my parents were the first generation from the village, you know, who are working now in town. And it was either about enjoying money or the war. You're surviving, looting. You do not know when the war is going to come. And you, so a lot of people just enjoyed life. Mm -hmm. Ginger was like a party. You know, everybody was a civil servant. They were living in big corporation houses. Nobody was thinking about building. Mm -hmm. But I remember my mother or is harassing my father about buying land, you know, about doing this, should, should talk about all these things. And one of the things she started doing, which I also appreciated, is that she kept putting money back in her businesses. Mm -hmm. She would always say, Fiona, don't eat your, don't eat your business. Don't eat your, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, now um, I've had Pastor Mukisa in straightforward, that don't eat your seed. Mm -hmm. If you have to plant, don't eat your seed. Mm -hmm. So she always put back money. So fast forward in my teenage years, we come to Kampala, uh, all the other sources of income sort of dwindle, but she stays with her beauty salon. From 15, I was every holiday that I'd go home, I would work in that salon. Mm -hmm. I would manage the salon. I used to do, there was a TV presenter called Sylvia Nalwoga. I used to do her hair, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a famous uh, play called uh, That's Life Mwatu. Mm. Yeah, some uh, this lady Nakaunde and Vicky, they would come to my to, to my mom's salon, and you do that, yeah. and I was the little fifteen-year-old who knew the funky styles, you know. So I I knew how to I learned how to do hair, but my mom made sure I was in that salon by five a.m. cleaning everything. Should say the early bird catches mm. the worm, mm -hmm. and those TV presenters and busy people that used to bring money to my mom would come between the hours of five and eight. They knew that you would gar it's a guaranteed opening there. So for me, this built a lot of principles subconsciously. Mm -hmm. Later on in life, of course, I made many mistakes. But it's not a surprise that when I left campus, I, I oh sorry, my whole university life when I left the salon, that my whole university life I was volunteering volunteering at the legal aid clinic mm -hmm. and sometimes you do projects and you get a little money i remember i was so proud to go to ldc and pay my first hostel fees from money that i'd gotten from that so although i must say that my parents did not train me to value money 
they train me to value relationships in fact our parents would frown at the love of money mm-hmm. so i didn't value money i didn't and i made a few mistakes whenever i had a lot of money i'd either give it away or i i i felt like it was we'll selfish it. to hoard you mm-hmm. know so if you have friends who have needs if you have this you, this is when you spend and as mothers sometimes we do that the day you get that that rain that what do you call it that money windfall, yeah. windfall. you just take your children to mm. cafe java <laughs> and you know i used to ha- i've had those bad bad habits despite mm. my mother's training mm-hmm. but as life goes on and it was very telling the the percentages between 30 and 40 you start thinking mm. you start thinking oh wow you start seeing your bosses not wanting to leave because maybe they've not planned well you start realizing you're getting closer to retirement you start thinking what if i lose this job you start thinking about your parents because mm. uh, uh, between 30 and 40 is when you're looking after maybe your parents so if they did not invest in property in things that last now you're looking after them and mm-hmm. you're thinking i do not want to be in this situation so multiple sources of income for me have taken on a shifting um and and it's very telling that the highest percentage of the people on this show right now are between their 30s and 40s i mm. wish they were between their 20s <laughs> and 30s because <laughs> that i feel that's the most productive time i was very happy that the first five years of my work life i had three jobs mm-hmm. consistently mm-hmm. and i was one of the most i was one of the highest paid people in my legal profession because i was a i was a dj and i was getting paid my first salary was 1.5 million and that was mm-hmm. a lot for a graduate mm-hmm. but i was doing two other jobs and lecturing also built me so what i what i want to say is having multiple sources of income is not enough mm-hmm. you need to have certain basic principles like don't eat your seed mm-hmm. you know why you're saving another one that i learned really late in life is save before you spend before you spend anything save put something aside yeah then something consistent that i've had since since i became a christian when i was 10 is tithe tithe it's biblical it's every businessman will tell you they, the rotarians you know mm. it's maybe their form of tithe thing tithe give back you have to give back to nature to where you got from you have to say thank you Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. I love that you know we're looking back at our parents and that generation and it was so common then mm-hmm. and it was about people applying themselves who were working hard using their hands yeah. mm-hmm. you know to bring in money in different ways. Now we have since seen a shift especially when a lot more focus started going towards education just mm-hmm. from the poll that was done. Mm-hmm. We know that the majority of people who are joining us right now have one source of income. Yes, just one. And I want to understand what happened. What do you think happened to change that where the attitude became when I get a job and I get mm. a salary, I'm good. So what you're working towards is finish school, get that job, have a salary and then all okay. So professor, what is the relationship between that way of thinking and multiple sources of income? Yeah, thank you very much. That, that's what uh thank you. That's what we call uh, arrivalism. <laughs> uh, arrivalism is is a, is a killing. Uh society is killing us because people think uh, you're going to graduate buy that small car, be build a small house somewhere in Vitorum house in Nigeria or where and you have arrived. Mm. That's what it, it, it is. And this kind of thinking is is very parochial is 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 the one which takes us back what people need to realize is that society changes needs change uh i mean because now for me i went to school studying was free i go to to second school in current currency maybe it is about 100000 but my daughter now in order for her to do well and be admitted in Namagongo Gayaza needs to be in a nursery school where I'm paying 2 million shillings so absolutely now there has been a change and this change fortunately or unfortunately has forced people to think of multiple sources mm-hmm. to me which is really very good and therefore uh, multiple sources of income as i've already told you is a natural phenomenon 
is, 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 a, is a, a, trans, a transitory. It is something that is going to be forced on you, even if you didn't, you didn't let me use that, even if you didn't like it. Because obviously everyone will find that the, the income you have from one source is not enough. It's not enough. I'm, I'm not talking about wants, because I want to differentiate between wants and demands. Mm. A want is not a demand. It is not necessary to want, because sometimes what you want is not necessary. But there are certain demands that you must meet, and one of them is you are trying to be in a good school, for example. Mm -hmm. That's not a want. That's a demand. <laughs> you see? So when that comes, then you realize uh, Christo, that you don't need your salary, it's not going to be enough. Even me at the level of, 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 of the professor, I am the one who fought with the president and were in a, in a boxing ring <laughs> for a very long time since 1989. And now, the professor now gets about 15 million. But if you want to take your son to UK, University, University of London, you know how much you're going to pay. That's not enough. But this little 15 million is not, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. So it will therefore means that you need multiple sources of income. So the changing circumstances, the changing structure of needs, the changing structure of demands, not wants, because I never want to deal with people of wants, especially these Ugandans. You want to have a, 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 a apartment of 16 in one, you want to have a Mercedes Benz, which Patrick Vitatori is building, is driving, which professor is, 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 is driving, we have worked for 40 years, you also want it, Fiona, the, when you just graduated yesterday, <laughs> this is kind of thing. I really hate these Ugandans who are, who are behaving like that. So let's differentiate a crystal, first between wants and which are really uh, unwarranted in many cases, and then needs and demands mm -hmm. which are coming as a result of changing society, society is always dynamic, and what I want therefore to urge Ugandans is to fit in this. I don't want anybody to live on the, on the wrong side of the road. Because do you know what is going to happen? Sorry, as I, 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 I speak about individual uh, uh, predisposition and, and, and needs, uh, excuse me, because of macro, because individual operates in a macro, economic environment. Mm -hmm. Sorry, if you see me again going to, 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 to Macro, that's the reason. Because you realize that the changing uh, economic environment where you are operating will not allow you even to hold your, 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 your wishes the way you wanted them. I, I, personally, I, I, I have told you when we were discussing informally that I wouldn't have wanted my, my daughter or son to be in a school where I'm paying two million shillings of a whole Frisian for a Frisian breed, mm -hmm. which I can import from, 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 from uh, New Zealand or, or from, from Netherlands. So when I look, for me, the way I look at money is that I look at money by the commodity where that, which that money can purchase. I am looking at money in terms of bags of cement, in terms of Frisian cows, in terms of bags of coffee I can produce. That is when you can value it, Fiona. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you reach where people have a wedding tomorrow and you say, I'm going to give you two million. And they didn't even invite you. That's why I said I hate men. But if you wanted to, if you bought that cow yesterday, you paid 1.5, you are meaning with 500,000 to finish up the, 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 the pen, then put it on a roller to bring it to your farm. You wouldn't, I don't think that you would pay that money just like that. Yes. So people should, should be told that, and in these universities, we are not teaching that. Even in the UK, we are not teaching that. That money is not money. You, you people, you, 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 you let us understand this thing called money. What is money? This thing you are holding in the pocket is not money. It is a license which Governor Mutebele has told you that when you present it to Crystal on the counter of somebody, that's why we write, the, and Fiona knows that very well. Mm -hmm. That's why you write the word legal tender. That word legal tender for 50,000 shilling means in the English language that when you present, Governor Mutebele has authorized you and his signature is there, that when you present that receipt, with the 50,000 note. If that person who is giving you a commodity was 50,000 refuses, take him all at court. This simply that's what it means. Yes. Nobody will refuse. So let's think about money in terms of what that money can, can do, what it can purchase, how many bags of cement, how many bags of coffee, mm -hmm. how many Frisian cows, what if you paid a plot of 8 million, 
paid the two million. He wanted to give to the other wedding of the sister of the neighbor who was an in law of, 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 <laughs> your, of your mother in law. You of your mother in law. He's a neighbor who was living, with the, just living around your mother in law. And you say, I'm splashing out mm -hmm. the, the two million. I like the, that. Which means you did not know, absolutely, you don't know the value. Uh -huh. Especially the time of value, even when you go deeper. Now, <laughs> even calculate the time of value of money. In fact, it's better, actually, it is much even better that instead of paying that two million in cash, you simply say you pledge. Because if the wedding is in, in like now, the wedding is in October, you know the time of value of money. If you pay that money in October, the two million is much higher value, it's less, much lesser value than the one you are going to pay now. So no. pledge instead of also pay paying cash. cash. But there is, in, as we say, in the, I like that you're talking about the definition of mm, money. Mm. And like you said, people look at cash, look at what's in the bank, look yeah. at what their salary is. But those chickens running around in your compound are money. Yeah, money. Cows. Yeah, yeah money. Are money. Coffee yeah. is money. Mm -hmm. It's money. So. So there's a big need for us to have a change in our understanding of the money. The understanding of money itself, but, what is it? But what I'm hearing so clearly is financial discipline mm. and money management. Mm. Money management. You touched on that, Fiona, when you are talking about your mother and her habits. And, and like you said, the older we get, when you're young and money is coming in, woohoo, which I think <laughs> is, is the case for very <laughs> many young people. <laughs> So you are celebrating, the money comes in, mm. especially the one you haven't planned for, and immediately you spend it. I'm going to treat these people, I'm going to buy this. Mm. But as you said, the older you get, you need more money. Yeah. The moment you become a parent, the mm. moment you start to say, okay, I want to buy land, I want to build a house, you need more money, but your salary will never change at the same rate, at the same speed. So I want to go over to you. Fiona, you talked about your journey, understanding, you know, how you have to look at money, how you have to treat it, and how important that is. I'm asking you now how important it is to manage your money when you're going into multiple sources of income. Because you talked about your mom having five businesses, five cottage industries, but did she start them all at once? Or she started one at a time and made sure that she kept putting the same money back into that business before she went to the next one. So that relationship between multiple sources of income and money management. Uh, one of the things that I learned from my mom is do what you're good at. She was always a cook. So in the earlier days when there were serious civil servants, every Sunday she would cook for the whole street, you know. Mm -hmm. She loved cooking. So it came naturally to her to start baking. She started baking for me, going to school, you know, when you bake things. And then my friends would see these scones and they loved her scones and they would ask about them. And then the next day, maybe the Mother's Union women would say, mm -hmm. we'll ask my mom, maybe do this for us. Then she started baking like that. Um, then maybe when it grew, she <coughs> had a friend who was working in Mukono who had started this whole looming weaving business. My mom went there and spent quite a lot of time studying the weaving, looming, and she even came back with someone who could do the actual work. Uh, another thing she did, she studied in Kianda College, and uh, I think she made some relationships with Revlon, and they were doing trainings of, of, of um, what are they called? Hairdressers. Mm. So she got this skill, and when she started, when she opened up her salon, she was actually the only person that time that I remember in Jinja who would treat people's damaged hair because at that time people are beginning to relax their hair mm -hmm. and there are all these products that had acid that, that there were all these damaged things and my mom used to use avocado like to give treatments these things that we're doing now with natural hair mm -hmm. avogi, my mom was doing them in the 80s you know and I think that what she meant to do then was to do what she was good at but she also didn't spread herself too thin and eventually when she didn't have time she dropped everything else and stayed with the thing that made the money but one of the things that I wanted to just mention uh, from what professor has said is <clears throat> our education system is also partly to blame you sp you get out of school when you're on average 22 and everybody tells you that until you have a degree, you can't have a job. And we think that the only sources of income are employment. Mm -hmm. Right now, um, in the last two years, my, my son just finished P7. He's going to S1. And in the last two years, I think because of we've had this, my, I and my husband have been having these thoughts about money, about talking about our bringing and, and, and what's different. 
and in the last two years part of part of me doing an audit of my life and realizing first of all do you spend a professor talked about value when you look at the list of priorities in your life do you spend according to your priorities because mm -hmm. sometimes we keep saying my family comes first but what are you doing for your family with your money when you're spending every night, there's a time people were sending around invoices of mm. lawyers and how much they spend in a bar in a night, you know? And yeah, so so that 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 audit, do a time audit first of all. I had to do a time audit because I had many jobs, many things spreading me thin. And one of the things I learned is I wasn't spending my time in the priority that I thought I should. I wasn't giving my family the time I needed to give them, I wasn't giving then my jobs, I needed to look at what brings in the most income. Mm -hmm. Am I spending my time there? Mm -hmm. You know? And and that for me happened a long time ago and I realized, you know what, this is my job at National Water. I have to look after it because it's my main cash cow. Mm. Then the other side hustles. Do you have to do side hustles that require you to be there? Uh -huh. You know? Mm -hmm. Now I am not as young as I was when I was running around with five jobs or three jobs, you know? So I do not have the energy to leave national water and go to another job and hustle. So that's why I will take maybe a board position that has money on it, mm. or I will do a small speaking engagement, or I will do a consultancy that has reasonable money because now I value my time. Mm -hmm. When I agree to be paid a certain amount of money for a consultancy, I am agreeing to employ people to do that work and supervise them. So you have to value your time. <clears throat> and that's what one of the things we need to look at. There's value of money, as Professor said, then there's the value of your time. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a lot of people now who have gotten into farming. You know, Ugandans, we get, we get into these fads. I did farming. I went into that fad, you know, about six, seven years ago. I did farming, we're doing this farming, and it was very, very profitable, but it took me. I and my husband would have to be at the farm because it was in Moya, it was very far. We'd have to leave on Friday, you've killed a work day, mm. come back on Sunday. You're exhausted, you're irritable, you can't look after your family, you don't have time for anything because we are chasing the money. Mm -hmm. Then it became the value of our priority. Mm. So we said, no, let's first put farming aside. Now we figured out rice. We are serious <laughs> rice professionals now. Mm. We will do it at a time when we can afford to do it. Mm -hmm. But right now, our priority is these little babies. Mm. So what can we do around these little babies? That time I was lecturing every evening. So I, I quit lecturing. Mm -hmm. And I said, let me see what I can do. So I started speaking. I started conducting trainings. And this bringing money, you mm -hmm. know. I, I opened up a PR firm. And I, go, I used to get a lot of money just for helping brands with their social media. with their, And it was so easy for me to even. That's how I started mentoring young people. Mm -hmm. Because you need to learn to trust people. By the time you get to your 40s, you should not, if you have three, two side hustles and you're working at both of them as hard as you are at 20, you need to quit. Because <laughs> they're going to kill you. That's why we get hypertension. Mm. So I, I, I tried a takeaway, I did, mm. and I realized that no, it, I, can, I have to be, have there. to be there. Because you have to be there. I can't. Mm. I, I can't do this hustle. Can't so <laughs> you have to look at the value of your time. And multiple sources of income, um, Apollo raised a very important issue, money markets. Mm -hmm. There's money that earns money without you doing anything. For me, this is the best money. I'm getting lazy in my old, year, in my old <laughs> age. Mm. Professor, don't laugh. But <laughs> <clears throat> I am very fascinated by the power of compound interest. And this is something I learned just in just the last few years. Mm -hmm. as an adult, you wish you knew this in your 20s. I knew this in <clears throat> If I knew this in my 20s when I was a DJ, I probably would have stayed a DJ and saved all my money in, in, in a unit trust, you know. Mm -hmm. I would be a billionaire by now because the, 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 the principle of compound interest is so powerful mm. that you are having other people make your money for you. Mm -hmm. And these people are highly regulated. Um, um, one of the other side hustles I do is I'm a, a member of the board of trustees of the Mara. Mm -hmm. And... I have learned so much about managing other people's money and making money for them while they just sit at home. 
you know mm -hmm. because you are paying them they are paying you to make money for them mm -hmm. now i would rather pay um i would rather sorry bank my money somewhere and lose the immediate what what's that the immediate satisfaction satisfaction of spending it now immediate gratification. yes yeah, so you need to to, to defer the gratification. gratification you need to have you mentioned discipline for you have to that's what i've learned now in the last two years i've learned that save before you spend mm -hmm. save before you spend i have a friend who wrote a book called money 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 talk she's called barbara katende mm -hmm. money cure and one of the things she says is you should have seven income streams the first time i heard that i got so overwhelmed <laughs> i said i can't do this this is too much i can't <laughs> you know but i think what apollo raised is very important sources We've, we, we had an exciting moment where we bought land. We forgot about it because it was, you know, when you buy land in a remote area and you completely forget about it, then a buyer comes, like, only two years later, and the land has doubled. Mm. You get it? Just, mm -hmm. just land, idle land seated there. Mm. And your title is now twice the value. Now, we need to understand, as you said, the value of the assets that we're getting. Mm -hmm. I have had issues with real estate. I've watched my mother, I've watched families. We've also been part of it. You, you put so much money in building apartments, maybe two apartments. You build two apartments, and then the rent is 500000 You know, you didn't do much. So you that do that money much. is not coming and back spend, for 20 years. Yeah, you spent about $250 million building this set of apartments, and in total you're getting $2 million per month, and then you have to chase. Uh, the land, the, the, the what are they called? Defaulters. Defaulters. You have to spend about two million every <coughs> time that defaulters run. First of all, they've run with like three months' rent. <laughs> then you have to pay lawyers. Mm. Then you have to repair and repaint for the next person. It mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. Mm. So mm. by the time you get all your hard-earned money and spend it in flats, you better <laughs> do your math. Mm. You know. So I've learned to say that: do not spread yourself thin. Do what is easy, low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. There are those things that are easy to do. Mm -hmm. Today, a, a lady walked into my office with jewelry. I didn't even have money. But these are these women just like spending on tiny things where they think <laughs> they're making. This lady works in an office next to me, and she came and just made a killing in her office mm -hmm. with jewelry. Mm -hmm. like she probably went downtown and bought the jewelry at nothing, and... Now he's making a killing. So do the things that come easily to you. That and you come love, naturally to you. But also reduce the things that take all your effort. Because you need to be alive. That is very important. Mm. There's, there's saving all this money, spending all this money, working so hard. And then you just die at 30 mm -hmm. or you die at 40. Mm. Your children will still be orphans. If there's nobody to manage their lives, then because you've spent it, you know. So I think we need to realize the value of time, mm -hmm. the value of our money, mm -hmm. and the, l the list of priorities and make sure that we do a priority audit in our lives. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, Fiona. I think that's some great advice because I know that right now we have people who are part of this conversation who are like, ah, but I have the other land. I can also put chickens. <coughs> yeah. I can put some goats there. Then, you know what? The other <laughs> plot of land, I'm going to put some rentals. Mm -hmm. And then I think I can also start making clothes. And, you know, out of the room at the back of the house. And I think that's what happens. So some people get so overwhelmed that they lose everything. And they say, okay, let me stick to this one thing. But also you talked about the power of discernment, how before you get into something, you first do your background checks, you, you understand the I trade and see if it is right for you. And look at it, don't start <laughs> big. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and also look at what it is you're doing, what your job is or what your business is and how these other side hustles can fit in to that. Uh, so thank you so much for that because I think that stresses people I and they're like something small. Yes. One of the things that I've learned after a lot of hustling and that I, I realized there are two things I do well. I communicate and I'm a lawyer. And those are the two things that have now become I will say no to everything else that doesn't fall around those areas. And that has helped me a lot in in uh, and then if if i feel tempted to do what crystal is doing mm -hmm. i'd rather put that in a money market because <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going to do that <laughs> yeah okay thank you so much mm -hmm. for that fiona i know apollo is here and uh i i'm going to uh-huh the headmaster i am sorry the headmaster <laughs> is here 
Yes, headmaster. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Uh, allow me to interrupt this conversation. You're getting a lot of love. Uh, allow me to use that word. A lot of love from the chats here. Uh, Fiona, your DJ friends say hi. <laughs> there are people saying, she was our DJ. <laughs> hi. Crystal, they are saying, yes, you are a hustler. They are saying hi. Uh, there's quite a lot of love coming to you guys. Thank you so much for, you, you have quite a following. And uh, ju just to give, just to put it in perspective, ladies and gentlemen, this is my show. Eh? <laughs> I'm the headmaster. So please, uh, when you are sending, first send to me, then send to them. Eh? Uh, <laughs> we want to go to our next, next, uh, next, next poll, but before we go that, I just need to note out something someone here noted out and said, while the professor and Fiona were sharing their stories and they were talking about their parents, some of us were looking and saying, what can we say about our parents? Now, I, I want to encourage you that it's not your problem that you came from a poor family or you have no story to tell your, about your, 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 your parents. But it is entirely your fault if your children have no story about you. So you need to make a story about yourself. Yes, you cannot, I mean, you came from a poor family. You are, yes, it was poor. It, is, it wasn't your choice. But when a poor family comes from you, entirely, entirely, entirely your choice. If the back office team could give me the next poll, I want to, we want to understand what are those side hustles people are doing. Uh, kindly, kindly launch that poll. What is what are the multiple sources of income you are engaged in? Uh, is it coffee? Sorry, is it crop farming? Is it animal farming? Is it cottage industries? Is it service industries? That is, uh, you're doing things like MC, like uh, li li like social media influencing, uh, like live streaming. Uh, is it retail business? Have you started a small car shop next there? Is it consultancy? That of, of what you're doing is just people come to you, they see it, and then you, 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 they tell you something and you ask them, you, you say it back to them and then they pay you. What is that thing? Is it a cottage, cottage industry? Are, are you making soap? Are you making jewelry? Now here you have to choose one of those, the, the best that among your, among your uh, sources of income, the, best, the one that is bringing you the biggest value. Uh, in three, two... One, you can stop that. I I want to commend the people that are using our poll, uh, our chats, and they also advertise. They said when they are, they are saying they are using this that when Fiona said low hanging fruits, our chat this chat is a low hanging fruit. So they are advertising there whatever they are doing on this while we are streaming this. Yes, we we we, we definitely will give you that space. We also want to let you know that we are live on Family TV. If you run in, in data, s uh, short of data, you can always tune into Family TV, we are live. Thank you so much Family TV for seeing the value and streaming this live to the audience. The majority of the participants are in service industry. That is their side hustle. And the next is crop farming at 14%. Then another 14% animal farming. R retail business is at 11 percent. Oh, consultancy is actually at 17 percent. So there is quite a number of people who are who just sit. You say you s tell them your problem, and then they they say them back to you, and then you pay them. Yes, I am going to be one of those. And then there is another majority that is saying others that, that they are not, which which was not listed. So, Crystal, Fiona, Professor, that's the kind of crowd you have. Kindly. So much for that. And uh, nice to know who we are engaging with. And thank you again for sharing your experiences. Uh, before we started this discussion formally, I was talking to Professor and I, I mentioned expertise and he said, ah, ah, no, 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 no. And a lot of the time people refer to you as an expert, yet we are learning mm. from each other right mm. now as we're speaking. Mm. Now, Two of the things that were just shared uh, right now, a lot of you are in service industry as a side hustle, and many of you are in farming as well, because the reality is the population of the world is constantly expanding. Mm. The numbers are going up, and we have to eat. Yeah. Yeah. There will always be a need for food. For food. Really? For food. Mm. And Professor, you were telling me that when it comes to tomatoes, it's like no one can even tell you anything about tomatoes. No because 
<laughs> so um, I think what uh, a lot of people feel overwhelmed by, they don't know how to begin. I mean, they're like, okay, fine. I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do the other. But where do I even begin? So if I can ask you, Professor, to take us back on your journey, especially, basically, your love for farming, mm. where you got it from, and then as a young man, how you yourself started looking at different ways mm. to, 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 you know, to earn, basically, as your sources of income, please. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Crystal. Uh, first of all, uh, we, ca we can, some of us should thank God because <laughs> really, so you, you could not even st think that you would be in Kampala, first and foremost. But by grace of God, you find that you, you, are, you are here, you are competing effectively, and the, the, the thing that I've come to, to value is actually valuing yourself. Mm -hmm. Then two, holding values. also, and, and, and these are the values which you get from your Parents, especially your mother. <laughs> I'm going to the word mother in this in this uh, uh, exposure is going to have a very very high frequency. So you are going to ask yourself what, what kind of mother did this man have? For me, I had a very special mother, uh, whom I cannot think that the world can produce, because she would tell me, and I want to bore you with three major proverbs, that amazing shabano. To go zangaro, that the water you have borrowed from your neighbor cannot clean your hands and they come clean. Wow. That's my mother. She has never gone to school. <laughs> Number two, that the wamukuru wawe tekuta mugongo. That even if your brother has money and he's a billionaire, that money is not yours. Mm -hmm. That's my mother. Those who understand Uganda ni mara waba chimbiri. It's from the Bachimbiri clan of, 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 of Rujumbara in, in North Kigezi. Number three, that when you are going for a journey, like for us from Kabale to Kampara, that Egabo era kuchizaa muhanda ujiho wawi. In English language, that uh, crystal, that yeah. the food which is going to sustain you on the journey is absolutely comes from you who prepared it yourself and you are in charge of that food. You cannot get from your friend, however much Fiona's home is a very good home in Barara. Mm. Fiona will not be there. Mm. Crystal will not be there in, 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 in Masaka. Mm. That the food which will sustain you in the way is absolutely the food which you prepared yourself and you reach Kampara. That's my mother. In fact, there is a time I went with one of the lieutenant colonels here, a friend of mine. We reached in Tungamo from Kabale, didn't I spend four days on the way that he wanted to give me a lift? <laughs> we spent uh, four days. Four because days? We, re we reached Tungamo. Her mother was, uh, was a, a, a nurse. We went inside. Inside there, then we had a Land Rover. This Land Rover, it, it, it broke the yeah. steering road. It broke that, that steering road, which comes the other, which comes from here and then goes to the, the, to the, to the yeah, steering. Then we didn't <laughs> Then we didn't have any, it is not in recent we have a phone. Mm -hmm. No phone. So we had to be in Tungamo there, there, okay. there for four days. That so I wanted a lift. A lift from where? So relying on others is Don't also a problem. Don't rely on others. So mm -hmm. for me, I learned that very early, Christo. I learned that very early. I am a very good grower of tomatoes. We have a plot somewhere in Kakunguru, Estates. I even got that plot through very, very different, difficult hassles. Eventually, we are even still, I think, we have just finished court recently oh. to, to be able to get it properly. So in that plot, I have bananas. I also have tomatoes. Me, I started growing tomatoes like at the age of four. Mm. Growing oh. tomatoes. I know tomatoes. I know death in M45. <laughs> I know it's bright. I know the ones which I know how to, to put those nodes. I know which one you cut. You cut it at 45 degrees. You don't catch it at 180 or at 135. It's <laughs> at exactly 45. So the water can heat it and then move it quickly. It doesn't rest there. Nobody can beat me even if this is Professor Kaya is in food science. In Makeriti. Kaya cannot beat me <laughs> in, in, in tomatoes. I grow. Then after that time, my mother died in, in 1980. After elections. And my father, I don't know. Don't ask me. Mm. And I have been telling my children that if I do anything wrong, 
to excuse me. So some of the things I don't know how to look after children because he was not looked after by a father. But I don't want people also to make mistakes because of stupidity. <laughs> because in my village, there was people, there were people who would copy. You, you see, a child, in, a child in Uganda doesn't grow in a home, grows in a community. Mm -hmm. So I was brought up by many parents. And I can mention their names if you want. So I, I grew up with very dignified people. And our village has very, very dignified people. I can mention some of them. Governor Manuel Mutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutimutim
I started the business of, of bringing Osho from uh, we would go to Wimi, where there's this cement, this, this human cement. Then we buy Osho in Kasonga Nyanja in the morning, come back, there were these people who would hire, we got a role, go on a role. But because I had very little money, I said now, if I use my money, small money, I would be able to buy half sack mm -hmm. when I started that after S4 uh, vacation. <laughs> But now the only man I have, I can buy half uh, a sack of posho. Now I, I now could make the deal with the driver. The drivers are these, uh, I know one of them I can mention, the name Nona is the brother of Santo. And they are there in the cavalry, they are even listening if they are there. Okay. So, so they, they, they would give me uh, an advantage to be the Ascari now of the role. So that I now, when ah. I reach with me, I will, I will be the Ascari of the role, free transport. Keep the other money, add it on the capital. By actually, by the time exams came of, of S4, of thank God I was still the best student. Can you imagine through, through those so, circumstances? So, Professor, if I may interrupt, I've heard so many amazing things as you were talking. You're talking about taking it step by step. Step by step. Step by step. Mm -hmm. You don't just jump into no. everything at the same no. time. Also, another thing I heard was, of course, integrity, honesty. That and means values. people will continue mm. to want to deal with you, continue to want to, to give you business. Another thing I heard was the importance of relationships mm. and your networks. Mm. Because for many of our side hustles, they start with the people that we know. It might be the people in your office. You're talking about the lady who came to sell jewelry. It might be the people in your community. It might be your, your friends at school. You can sell your, your cookies, your mandazis too. So I was hearing all these different things. Um, and I know that from our earlier conversation, you said you're into tomatoes, you have matoke, bananas, pigs, cows. I have a lot of maize. Uh -huh. Now I was thinking about what Fiona mm. said about also sometimes spreading yourself too thin when you have so many things going on. Mm. And I think a lot of people talk about the juggling of balls. And if you're juggling too much, eventually everything will fall. So, so how do you manage all these different sources of income? Because, again, we have to go back to uh, time management, money management as well, but also that discipline that comes with knowing how to let all these things. And, and, and uh, of course, management, you know the word management, what does it mean? Getting work done through people. Mm. That's all. So Fiona, don't fear because, like, the, the, first of all, the, the way we have this farm, it is very near, it's not far. Mm. It's about 40 minutes. If you have a good car, mm. it is about 40 minutes to drive there. Don't, don't, you cannot have a, a, a farm in Kabari. <laughs> when I'm here to take it, you were a, even talking about your home in Kabari where part of it you can still rent it uh, out uh, and I it's making home, money for you. We have a home in Kabari. Actually, I was talking with my son in the morning. I even showed the crystal here. The way you build it, like if you want to build now your family home in in the Noya, is that the way we build towers, each room is a house itself, it's a suit. Yeah, we have about eight, eight oh. of them. The crystal have shown what the, the picture. It is eight. So each room, even as, as I speak right now, everything is hired. Oh. Even when I was just coming in, somebody sent me one million. <laughs> just to need. So your home mm. is making money for you and as the well. Boy, the, and the boy who looks after lead, because I, I know many people, I copy that thing in South Africa. South Africa. They started that then it's coming in Nairobi. Uh, Nairobi, somebody would be in Nairobi, but he has exactly Airbnb. and B. Actually, our house is in Airbnb. and B. It's an Airbnb. and B. But if family comes, stays in it, pays even there are some people who have not paid me up. Uh, they are the, 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 the. So you, you get that room, it is hired separately. Get another one hired separately. Get another one hired separately. The boy who looks after it, also, I, also give him, and then looks after the home, also get some money, and look after it very well. Okay. Then we have uh, another one where we have bananas and where I'm growing th those uh, uh, tomatoes. It is here in Kakungu, the other land which was in Kota, was fighting. That one, you build this small house as well. We build this small house, sitting room, uh, bedroom, store, sitting room, bedroom, store. He's hiring it, I think, like 250,000 <laughs> each. That's 500,000. So if they pay him for three months, it's 1.5 million. Mm. I don't touch it. I don't touch that money. That man is the man who was at the, the gate, manager. Uh, the manager who's looking after it. I don't, I don't even go there for about uh, six months. Even this one of Kabbalah, I don't go there. This farm has got about uh, got workers there. The, the coffee, because we've got a lot of coffee there. 
and the price is good now, mm -hmm. 4,600. If the price of coffee is not bad, the, the, the maize is bad, coffee will be good. The, 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 in economics, is palm priming. Mm -hmm. In economics, it's called palm priming. One community will palm prime another. Okay. So that, that you don't lose out. And this can manage there. So these boys will manage the, 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 the place. Okay. These ones will manage. This one, it is just management. Mm -hmm. Patrick Vitatori was actually telling us he was our speaker. The other day, I'm a Rotarian. And let me advertise my club. <laughs> I'm the president of the Rotary Club of Muyenga. And I want people to be Rotarians. In Rotary, we serve above self. And Patrick Vitatori was my guest speaker the other day. We had 1,000 people on a call. Patrick Vitatori said one better statement that he has business in Nairobi. As you know very well, he has business in Nigeria, business in but that in the business in Nairobi, Patrick has not been there for the last six months and it is making a tremendous profit. You don't need to be there. Mm -hmm. Because Patrick has put very good management and then you build trust of, 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 of the businesses. So I, we, I, we build trust of the people who work with us. The exercise management. I've done management. I've had, I have an MBA. Okay. And they know what management is. You trust people, delegate properly, give them sufficient authority to make decisions. Then for you, you, you get reports. How many pigs are produced? Our pigs <laughs> produced a lot of children the other day. <laughs> and each, each child is, each daughter I, is... I love the passion. 70,000. <laughs> yeah, you said yeah. you sell 10 and that's yes, 700,000. 700, thank you, thank you so much, Professor. Yeah. So what you are but saying... But I've not seen them. You know, I've not seen them and I'm comfortable. But you I'm know worried, they are there. They will die, yes, I'm not worried. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> so yeah. what, what you're telling us is you don't have to do everything yourself. By yourself, no, no, no. So no, you no. may feel intimidated thinking, yeah. oh, but I have to do this, I have to do that, but there are ways that you can make, yeah. set the foundation, <laughs> uh, start yeah. the process, and yeah. then allow it to start to take care of itself. Mm -hmm. Now, over to you, Fiona. When we're talking about multiple sources of income, we're, we're talking about how times have changed. Our parents used to earn from small businesses, maybe even around the home or the farm. And then, you know, as you said, the world keeps changing. Mm. Then we started seeing more and more people becoming professionals, getting jobs, getting promotions, and, and, you know, building careers, and they were earning there. But in the last two years, basically the last five, ten years, but especially with the pandemic in the last two years, more and more businesses are being forced to go online. Yeah. In fact, it's, it is absolutely necessary. Yeah. And more and more people are putting their side hustles, I'm talking to you, online and are learning uh earning online should i say um what is your understanding of multiple sources of income in terms of the digital spaces that are now available to us um as an mc i moderate professionally online as well and that is another way that yeah. i can earn mm. so i think that um <coughs> digital spaces have empowered us more they have um actually the tax money is suffering right now because <laughs> People are making money and they don't know how to catch the money, mm. right? And uh, the, the beauty with digital spaces is that you have control, is that you have a space. Greta Thunberg uh, is, is, is 14 and now she's, an ex, she's an now an expert on, on what? On climate change. Climate change, change, you know? change yes. Just because she used her voice on social mm. media. Mm. So one of the things for me that's been exciting is, and Professor touched on it, your net worth is your social capital. Correct. A lot of people right now, a lot of millennials like me, millennials, not the young people, mm. <coughs> still value their privacy so much that they're actually anti-social media. They've refused. Mm -hmm. But then tomorrow you want to sell something. Where are you going to sell it? Um, during lockdown, the first lockdown, something amazing happened for me. I'm a hoarder. Uh, when I say hoarder, I mean... Um, in Please explain. <laughs> okay, let me explain. I like to... It's something I learned from my dad. Oh, we're talking about mom. Now, my dad taught me something mm. about buying in bulk. Uh, what, what do you call that? Economies of scale? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, he used to always buy a sack of this, a sack of that. And my mom would complain. She'd be like, I, I didn't send you for a sack. But you know, that sack would be there for months. Mm. And you're not spending... You're, you're buying wholesale and you're not spending on retail prices. And remember, you're not spending transport going to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. So I was that person. And then, you know, when I got married, of course, my husband didn't understand that, that background. So that dropped. But during lockdown, 
my I would call it hoarding. Mm. You know, when I say hoarding, I mean saving for the acting like a bear. You get all your nuts, <laughs> you save them for winter. <laughs> no, hoarding, hoarding yeah. in, in economics has got a negative connotation. Ah, okay. No, I know what you're yeah, yeah. about, but, but for me, I, keeping I, I, for buying in bulk, yeah, yeah. I'm always uh-huh. over prepare. Uh-huh. Over prepare. Yeah. When I'm going on leave, people say you're not going to die. Mm. Like, don't over, you know. <laughs> so I, I, someone said this to me. They're going to look at me. I said really, mm. and I went and I found sources of of food in Kikubo. And now I have people who deliver for me. I'll buy, I'll buy all my dry groceries. They just come. They, they are delivered home mm-hmm. in sacks. Mm-hmm. I'm a busy person, mm-hmm. and it was very hard to always shop in the supermarket. But when I started that hoarding, because I thought the world was ending, eh, when they were going to lock us down, yes, mm. we saved so much money. I said, what? One of the things we need to do is your and and I. That's when I noticed that your your net worth sometimes is your social capital. Because there's a lady who started just getting bags of rice and bagging them into small portable things and then writing to all her girlfriends on the WhatsApp group, who wants a bag of rice? Five kilos at a very big price, but the convenience, people were paying for the convenience of having five kilos together mm. delivered at their home. Brought to you. Yes. Then I found another lady who slaughters fresh meat. It was, a, it was during that time when they were saying um, meat is being poisoned by formaldehyde. Mm. So I was very, very, I was panicky. I said, what is this? So I found a lady who packs, she slaughters meat every weekend and she packs it and you get fresh meat that is clean, that you're sure of. And she delivers, and she's selling at a wholesale price. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. saved me going to haggle with people and buy funny meat. Mm. The third thing that happened was someone told us that all oh, the swamps now are full of metals and stuff. So these vegetables we're buying might be poisoned. So I started a little cottage garden behind the house mm. of growing vegetables mm-hmm. and stuff, aloe vera, you know, all these things. When COVID struck and we had to steam ourselves, we had to have everything you need. You know? <laughs> we didn't spend money mm. because you can imagine how much it costs for you to go and buy the herbs. You need to steam yourself every day. Mm-hmm. The other thing that I learned um, is to do th- to plan. It's very good to plan. Mm-hmm. Remember that time is money. The time you spend in that supermarket every day. There are people who shop every day. Or even the back and forth yeah, every the day. the back and forth, the transport to the supermarket. But I also, just something as small as milk. Mm-hmm. When you wake up and your children need milk and someone forgot to buy milk yesterday, you can kill the maid. You know? <laughs> because you're frustrated. Maybe you don't even have money on you. There's no shop that's open. Mm-hmm. So... Let, I learned to plan. And one of the things that, that helped us with is managing your costs. He was talking about the rivers that pour in and the rivers that get out. Now, you need to manage your costs. Mm-hmm. We all have needs. We all have growing needs, not once. Mm. But we spend more because we don't plan. Yes. When, when you have to rush in the rush hour and use a border border from Nigeria to Kampala, you're going to spend like 20K. Mm-hmm. But if you planned very, very well mm. and you took your taxi at 6 a.m., mm. you probably spent 2,000 shillings. Mm-hmm. So it's very expensive not to plan. Okay. One. Two, the digital space is a, is a huge hub of opportunity. When... <clears throat> When um, we started talking and doing things with people, I have, I have become part of very many speaking engagements. I've gotten so many opportunities from just being online. Mm-hmm. And that's where I'll come to what you talked about. He was talking about values. Build your brand. Mm-hmm. Build your brand. When Crystal says, buy this makeup, now we, you know, NSS wants to. Want to. <laughs> right now, NSS <laughs> is you paying know, Crystal for her to associate herself that brand association, that is money. <laughs> so your net worth also touches your brand. Yes. When you saw, you see, I'm a Rotarian as well, Rotary Club of Chihuahua. Yes. And and um, all the people in your village are in my Rotary Club. <laughs> so, but, yes. But one thing Professor said that's very amazing is that his mother knew the power of social capital. Mm-hmm. That's a great amount. I told you about your brand. That your brand can make you money. Mm-hmm. So in these days of digital space, 
build your brand be jealous about it do not be okay if a video leaks a sex video or whatever mm. no do not be okay and if you think that brands do not make money you should have seen bad black when she was collecting her money because of her brand, you know, mm -hmm. the ministry of, you know, mm -hmm. came and, and yes. said you're the only influencer who can influence these women and mm. they can talk to these and women. Talk to this. yes. So even if you are a divorcee and you make your niche speaking to divorcees, uh, we, the other day we were looking at a friend of ours who was, um, who's now started the credo and now she's a parenting expert. Mm -hmm. you know? She's yes. very young. Yes. So someone would say, what kind of parenting expert are you? Mm. I have a friend who started talking about cryptocurrency when nobody knew what that was. In six months, he was being called all over the world as an expert <laughs> on crypto. Because I would say, which Ugandan speaks about this? They check on digital mm. media. You might do wonderful things. If no one knows about it on LinkedIn these days, mm -hmm. other people are going to take your opportunity. Uh, so the digital space, in, with the digital space, social capital is very, very important. His mom knew the, the, the value of that. That's mm -hmm. why she befriended the right people that would ensure that her children would be... The reason we take our children to school, to certain schools, it might not be that those schools are giving special education, but there's a certain point at which the best friend of that guy is going to be the minister. Mm. <laughs> Do you yes. understand? Yes. Yes. You have to be that strategic. Mm. Mm -hmm. Professor wants his daughter to go to Harvard because he knows that people do not go to Harvard to get first class degrees. Nobody asks you what kind of degree did you get from Harvard. Mm. The moment they hear you came from Harvard, mm. you're sorted. Mm -hmm. Brand association. Mm. Yes, mm. yes. Uh, social capital. Um, somebody, um, what's his name? He says, John Maxwell says you're the average of the five people you spend time with. Mm -hmm. Now, these people that we drink with, these people we hang out with, there, was a, there, there were these old plays that used to be done by um, very old people, by Bakayimbida or whatever. And, and they would show you this man. He goes and drinks every night. His friends are happy with him. His marriage is getting destroyed. The kids don't have food. But he goes and they buy him expensive liquor, but they cannot lend him money to go and sort out his no. family problems. He is in debt and when he's in jail, they forget him. When he comes, they drink the whole night and spend three million. Mm -hmm. But they cannot give him... Are those your friends? Mm -hmm. If I spend time with you, and in this time, Professor, this has been amazing. Listening to you has been a mentorship program. Yes. <laughs> I wish I had paid for this time. <laughs> you know? So what I'm saying is, what is the value? <laughs> what is the value of the time you spend with people? Mm -hmm. sure. Right now, I'm very jealous about my time. My free time I spend with my children. Mm -hmm. Because I know that... The, that amount of time my dad and my mom spent teaching me certain things are why I'm like this now. Mm -hmm. It's the greatest investment. Yes. So I have to spend time with my children. So if someone is asking me out on a weekend or in the, what is it called? It had better be worth my money. It yes. had better be worth my time. Mm -hmm. Because there's an opportunity cost. When you value your money, as he said, I have a friend when we're in Amagu, sorry, when we're in yeah, secondary school, we had that one miserable canteen. I'm not shelling the school or insulting the school, but the only sensible thing in that place was bread. <laughs> so how you'd m count the value of your money, because that, that was the only thing you could really buy, mm -hmm. was loaves of bread. In the uh -huh. Yeah. So I remember one of my girlfriends when we went to secondary school, uh, to campus, her, her, her boyfriend brought her flowers and she said, what is wrong with this man? Hmm? <laughs> this could have been seven loaves of bread. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why is he bringing me flowers? Mm. She knew the value mm -hmm. of money. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've been a student and you have starved and mm. you have wanted 2,000 shillings for a loaf of bread, when someone brings you flowers of 20,000 shillings, you're just seeing 10 loaves of bread go to waste. <laughs> And you become less fickle about life. Yes, yes. People come and say, oh, my, my, my booze is black label. There's a time I and my husband were calculating how much money we spend on going out. Mm -hmm. out yes. And this and this and this and this. And then we spoke with our friends who drink. We could not compare. Mm -hmm. And yet we thought we were, we were very mm -hmm. extravagant. Eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of money. When, when the president talks about alcoholism and alcohol, he has a point. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of our GDP is in that place. Okay. The amount of time, <laughs> how much you spend recovering from a hangover, 
how much work you lose because you're 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 paying mm-hmm. that work of shame <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's that thing of the hangover. What is it called? <laughs> the, it's a movie, The Hangover. They wake up and this guy has a tattoo and there's a lion in the bathroom. <laughs> and you do not know. You have to spend, they, you spend the whole movie of about a whole week almost reading their wedding, trying to figure out where did the lion come from? Why don't mm. I have a wedding ring? And it all came from a, an extravagant <laughs> night out. Thank you. So you need to count the cost. Of your decisions, I'm not. I'm not talking against booze here, mm-hmm. and breweries and the rest, but I'm saying you need to count the cost of your time. Mm-hmm. Drink responsibly. Yeah, the mm-hmm. people, your company. Mm-hmm. You know, bad company corrupts good car- character. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, my husband has been a good example of that. He, I, I always used to think he was really, really, very strange, because all his friends, a lot of his friends, a lot of the friends he, apart from his like best friends. Most of them, even the ones he tells you, I went to school with this one. Then you discover they're all like six years, seven years, ten years older than him. Older than him. Mm -hmm. And they're all businessmen. And some of them 